Hi everyone, thanks so much for stopping back by the farmhouse. It is Kim with Bloomwell Home and Gardens and if you are new here, check in down below and say hi. We are doing videos once a week on living on our homestead, our 1860s farmhouse. We do a lot of fixer-upper things and we raise chickens and uh, garden all the great things about living in the country. So go ahead and subscribe, ring the bell so you are first notified when we post a new video. And with that being said, let's get into this video about chickens. Now just last week I posted a video about different chicken breeds and what you can expect. I talked a little bit in there about broody chickens and today we're going to talk more about broody chickens, what to expect, and our broody chicken story that I have been promising. So what exactly is a broody chicken? A broody chicken is a hen who has reached a certain age of maturity and she has a strong desire to sit on a nest of eggs and hatch them out and have baby chicks. Now, it's a totally normal process and what causes it is simply just like us ladies, hormones and that instinctive mothering nature and they wanna have babies. There does not need to be their fertile eggs or a rooster present in order for them to go broody. They just get that mothering instinct and they want to do it. Now, that's gonna present some different scenarios. If you do not have a rooster, and she has gone broody, there are a couple different ways you can handle that situation. If you want her to have baby chicks, you can do that in two ways, even though her eggs were not fertilized by a rooster. You could totally get some eggs off of Facebook. Um, they have chicken pages where people will send out their fertilized eggs for hatching. You can get them on uh, chicken groups, on Facebook as well or maybe you have a friend or nearby farm who has fertile eggs you can slip them under her and you want to kind of do it as soon as she starts sitting so that she's going to sit for them the 21 days 21 days is the approximate number of days it takes her to hatch out those baby chickens now if you don't have access to eggs or don't want to buy them there is a second way and this is the way that I do it when it gets close to their 21 days of sitting on their nest, I head down to my farm store or find babies at a hatchery or from a friend and I will pick up a couple babies and I will slip them under her and I will share that technique with you in our funny broody hen story. Now, if you do not want chickens and she's broody and those eggs have been fertilized. Either way, if you've decided that you don't want her to sit because during those 21 days that she sits, she also stops laying eggs. So if you count on her for her egg production and you don't want her to go broody and you definitely do not want chickens, then this is how you handle this. First and foremost, as early as you can, I know some of you are not home during the day, but as soon as you can, remove all eggs from all nesting boxes. If there's no eggs, she can't sit. That is your first step. Secondly, each time you see her in the nesting box, remove her from the nesting box. This works really good in the morning because when they're on those nesting boxes for 21 days, they will even tend to give up food and drink. So you kind of have to be forceful to get them to eat and drink. So if you remove her and take her outside and present her with food and drink, maybe she will get sidetracked by the food and not go back to the nest. And you may have to repeat this as two or three times. You can make sure she's outside and not near the boxes and keep her outside so she cannot go back in um, for certain periods of time during the day. At nighttime, if she's sitting in that box on those eggs, you can totally take her from the box and put her up on a roosting bar. And then you quickly want to turn off the light because chickens do not see well after dark. They cannot find their way around. So if you put her on a, a roosting bar and you quickly turn off the light, she's probably going to play it safe and stay on the roosting bar throughout the night. And each time you get her out of the nest for longer periods of time, she's going to stay away from that nesting box more often. Now, if it gets a dire and there's no other way, there is a thing called a breaker box. 
and it is a nesting broody breaker box and you use a uh, a small cage and you don't want it to have a floor in it you want it to be wire I think a rabbit cage works best you want to place this up on blocks so that it's a little high off the ground you want this as uncomfortable for her as possible I know but if you are really wanting to break her you have to get in there and, and pull out all the stops so you put her in this cage up on bricks so she can't um, lay on the ground and you don't put any bedding in here you make sure she has plenty of food and water and you leave her in there for three days after the third day you can take her out and put her with the other hens and chickens if she is socializing and walking around pecking and things like that then you can leave her out if she heads for that nesting box you're gonna put her right back in that cage for another three days and hopefully it'll only take once or twice in that cage and she will be broken if you have a rooster and she goes broody and you want baby chickens you are all set you just let nature take over now either way I want to make a little point here I want you to understand that mamas know exactly what to do with their eggs so the best advice I can give you is not to touch them you want to leave them alone and let mama do her thing. Eggs have to be turned and rotated and heated and cooled, and mamas know exactly how to do that. Even if you put them in an incubator, there are certain days you turn them and each they get a half a turn, a quarter turn, however you are supposed to do it. Mamas know how to do that too. And if you go in and you move their egg, they may not turn it at the right time, and that may cause risk to the development of your embryo and your baby chicken so you don't want to move them around a lot um, I know however the anticipation is crazy and you want to know what's going on at that point you can candle the eggs and candling the eggs is just simply taking the egg in a very dark space and putting a light underneath the egg so that it shines through so you can see the size and the shape of what is inside the egg. If there is something growing in there, you'll see a lot of veins in there. Um, and you will tell that it is an embryo and at each stage it gets bigger. However, you want to be careful when you extract that egg from underneath of the hen that you leave it in the exact position that you took it from. So when you slide it back under her, it goes in the same position so she can turn and rotate as she needs to. So uh, they call this candling because that's how they did it in the old days with a candle. But you could totally use a flashlight or the flashlight on your phone and you'll be able to see what's going on inside that egg and you'll kind of have an idea of how many chicks are going to hatch. Now not every viable egg, uh, even fertilized, is going to uh, develop into a perfect embryo and a baby chick. So it just gives you a heads up of what's going on. And if you want to check the progress about 10 days in, you can do that. Otherwise, I highly advise to just let nature take its course and leave mama alone with her eggs. Now, if you are like me and you want baby chicks and you don't have a rooster, you can do what we do and we get those baby chicks and we slip them under. And this is where our funny broody hen story comes in. Now, a couple years ago, we had a couple broody hens. Two of them went broody at the same time. And they were Minnie, our black Jersey giant, and our big Rhode Island red Gertie. And Gertie, man, she was just powerful crazy when she was broody. She would crawl at you like a like a rooster almost. She would attack you. No one could get to her eggs. And so we went ahead and let them go just because I wanted to increase my flock and I knew what kind of chickens I wanted. And it worked out great because like I explained a little bit ago in the chicken breed video, and if you didn't see that chicken breed video, I will certainly link that down below. The Rhode Island Red is a red hen and when she has babies or when she was a baby, those hens are yellow. As I said before, if it's a red colored hen, um, the baby will be a yellowish color. They vary in the depths of yellow, but those are kind of the norm. And if it is a black hen, those hens, those babies are going to be black, various degrees of black, but they will be black. 
And so I had been wanting for our flock because we live in an 1860s farmhouse. I wanted some more traditional birds around the farm. I wanted more color in my flock. And a buff Orpington and a Plymouth Rock are both older types of breeds and I really wanted them on our farm. So I thought, okay, that is great because a buff Orpington chick when it is little is also yellow. And that would be the perfect match for our Rhode Island Red. And a Plymouth Rock chicken is black when it is a baby and that would be the perfect match for our black jersey giant so when it got close to their time i took them out and i put them in our brooder and our brooder is just an old rabbit hutch that i've converted over into a brooder and it's about four foot long so there's plenty of room in there for both hens so i put one in this corner and one in that corner with all her eggs and fresh bedding food and water so they were all set up and then that day, I went to this tractor supply store and I picked out some baby chicks. I ended up getting my two little black uh, Plymouth Rocks and I got two little Buff Orpingtons. Um, and I had to get two because, you know, you just don't know what your odds are of one not making it. And I didn't want to give them babies and have the baby die and that would just be really bad. And so... I had to get to now first of all I had to convince my husband that we really needed babies because I told him these poor girls have sat all this time and they they're not having babies we know that they can sit till the cows come home and if those eggs are not fertilized by a rooster and we did not have a rooster those eggs were never going to hatch and those girls were going to go into a deep depression. They would not eat or drink and you know, they would lose weight and they would be susceptible to illness. So, I, you know, the only solution, unfortunately, is to get them baby chicks. And of course, my husband was, you know, is there no other solution? Oh, no, no, there is no other solution. This is just what we have to do. We have to... We have to get them baby chicks. And so we got them baby chicks. Now, as I was tucking everyone in for the night, um, I checked to see where they were. And of course, Gertie was over here in the right hand corner and Minnie was over here in the left hand corner. Now this is just about dark. They are not gonna be moving around anymore. Chickens do not like to move around in the dark. They can't see, it's scary all of those things and I knew where they were and I was all set to go. I had even counted the steps um, in the lean-to. There's two steps down into the lean-to and then a few steps over to the left and that's where the brooder was and that's where I was going to be taking the baby chicks. I even closed my eyes and counted my steps. I knew how to get there and I was all set, went back in the house and waited until dark dark so it's about 9 30 at night we went out and it was a pitch black night too there was no moon there were no stars it was black as black could be and i opened the barn door and it's black because i just it's black and i didn't count the steps from the door of the barn across the barn into the lean-to. Didn't do that. And it's not just across the barn, friends. You gotta go in the barn, turn this way, turn, you know, it's a, it's, it's like, because there's stuff in the barn. There's workbenches and wood and, and stuff for projects and storage. The, the barn, it, there's just a pathway through. And so I had no idea how to get across the other side of the barn without falling and breaking things and my husband said follow me and he put my hand on his shoulder and we made it through we made it through and then we opened the lean-to door and I knew exactly now I was great good to go and so I went down the the steps and I'm holding our baby box and inside the the box I have it separated and so I know that the two little black babies are over here and the two little yellow babies are over here. And I know where my mamas are, so we're good to go. 
Now, I came fully prepared, guys, because let me tell you something. Chickens are not dumb. They are not. They are not dumb animals. They are pretty smart little creatures. And so I had in my pocket some crushed eggshells. Oh, yeah. You got to be... You gotta be smart. You gotta think like a chicken. So I open the door and I reach my hand in. We're not making a sound. And thank goodness these little peepers are quiet. They're not peeping. And I stick my hand under her and I have my eggshells in my hand and I stick my eggshells under her and I spread them around and I pick up the egg. And, and all the while I'm, I'm moving my fingers ever so slightly because, you know, what does a hatching egg feel like? You know, it kind of moves around a little bit, right? Because it's, it's coming to life. So I took the whole egg out. And then I slipped that baby under her and the other baby under her. And then I went over here. And this side of the box was for Gertie over here. And this was the two little yellow chicks. And I did the same for her. I took my hand and I slipped it under her and I dropped those eggshells and scattered them and gently pulled out that egg and slipped the two babies under her. And unfortunately, sometimes mamas don't accept babies like that. Um, others have told me that it hasn't, but I have had great success with this technique. And so I just wanted to be sure I went back in the house and then waited a little while and came back out to hear if I could hear a little chick saying, you know, hey, I'm cold. Mommy didn't accept me. Cheap, cheap, cheap. And I came back out and it was quiet as a church. It was so quiet. And so everyone was sleeping. Everything was fine. Another great success with slipping the baby under the hen. I was so happy. I went inside, we went to bed, the next morning I got up bright and early just to make sure everything was okay and I ran right out there to the brooder and I didn't hear anything and I thought, okay, is everything okay? And I flipped up the blanket because I covered the, the brooder with a blanket to keep them extra warm and keep predators from finding them. And I looked in the brooder and the girls had switched places on me. Between the time we checked on them and when we went back out after dark. And it was really, really dark when we went out the first time. So I didn't think they were gonna do anything. I didn't think they were gonna be moving around. They were on their nest. They never leave their nest. But these two little birds had left their nest and switched places. So I'm looking at Minnie over here. Now Minnie is here and she's the black Jersey giant. And the Rhode Island red Gertie is now over in this corner. And out from underneath Minnie's wing pops two little yellow chickens. And all of a sudden come running out from underneath the red Rhode Island red are these little black chickens. And these Plymouth Rocks, when they're babies, they're all black, and sometimes they have a little a little yellow dot on the top of their head. So they're black, black. They're not speckled like you see when they get older. They are black. And I just didn't know what to do. I'm looking at them and I'm like, do they know? Because, you know, they're pretty smart. Do they know? And the chickens were just clucking at me, and they were so happy. And it sounded like they were just telling me, like, look, Mom, we had babies. Look, there's babies everywhere. We had babies. And we're so they were so happy. They just clucked and clucked and clucked and clucked and clucked. And, of course, I just had to give them all the praise in the world because if they don't see it happen, it had to happen inside. It had to happen. That's how you put even grown chickens in with other grown chickens is if you do it overnight, like I did with a rooster in that video, and I'll link that down below too, they don't know. But they do know enough to know that if there were eggshells, those eggs didn't hatch. So I had to put the eggshells under there. We had to make that look correct. But they were pretty sure that those were those babies, and they were all mixed up, and they didn't seem to care. Later on, they kind of took their own, their correct babies to their correct places. And when I would let them out of the brooder box, they would take the babies outside and they would, you know, show them everything.
But I did notice too, and comment down below if you've noticed this with your own flock, that some days the Rhode Island Red would have all four babies and some days the Black Jersey Giant would have all, but they didn't care. They were just like moms and this was like daycare and hey, will you watch the kids while I go shopping or hey, will you watch the kids while I go dust bath? That's kind of how they did it and I thought that was really unique and I'm really excited that I had that experience and I just wanted to share that with you and share how I was so prepared and had everything down just even to the crushed eggshells making it look good and those silly mamas switched places on me and I didn't know what to think. So I hope you all enjoyed this video and uh, hope you'll give it a like if you like hearing chicken stories and if you have chickens give it a like also. I'll see everybody next time. Be blessed and be safe.